The conviction of his call into the ministry started as far back as 1979 after Sunday left the Polytechnic Ibadan. Ministry was nowhere in his plans then, so he ignored the conviction for many years. More so, he could not see himself settling down to the life of deprivation that seemed to be the hallmark of many whom he knew to be in ministry. Having experienced lack for the better part of his life till then, he wanted none of it. God's call would, however, not let him go. After leaving the university, he sought God's face on what kind of ministry he was called to do. In 1984, during a time of prayer and waiting, God spoke to him through 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 5. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make foolproof of the ministry. Although initially, when God called me, I didn't know that. I didn't want to do ministry. I, because I wasn't really impressed by what I saw with people who were pastors and ministers. You know, they were poor, suffering. And I thought to myself that, hey, I have intelligence. I have what it takes to work hard and make a good life. So why would I sign up for something that you'll be depending on people to give to you before you are sustained? So that put me off for ministry, but of course, uh, when God began to do, I knew that I knew that God was calling me to ministry. Finally, I submitted to God and uh, God proved himself. Uh, I loved it because one of the desires of my heart is to see my life bring positive uh, impact upon people, society, and the nation. So, and uh, I found out that ministry is the greatest way by which your life could really add value to people. It was at this point he had a meeting with Bishop Francis Waleoke, who invited him to join him in the Sword of the Spirit Ministries. He accepted and worked with him as Crusade Director. At God's instruction, he started the Word Communication Ministries on July 26, 1985. The ministry was commissioned by a team of ministers led by Reverend Adedekbo Lua Adioshun at the Ebenezer Baptist Church, Oketunui Badon, which was the church he then attended with his family. At the time we come started, uh, we were not having members per se, we just had partners because Wokom didn't start as a church. Wokom started as an evangelistic ministry. Uh, so we had few uh, partners who were supporting us. Actually, Wokom started with four people, four members. Yeah, myself, my wife, my secretary, my assistant, who was a primary school leaver, and uh, a plant mechanic. <laughs> Only the four of us started. Just later, we started fellowship, and a few, a few more people joined us. And definitely, my wife was a major, major, major supporter. Uh, she was working, and uh, whenever she earns her salary, a huge proportion of it went into ministry, and uh, the rest went into taking care of the family. So. I've I had a few people who were supporting uh, alongside my wife. The words of 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 5 seemed to fuel the fire in evangelist Sunday Bukwola's bones. He had a burden and a passion 
to reach the lost wherever they were. There was never a time I felt like giving up on the calling of God. But there were several times I felt God. You probably called the wrong person because there's no way I can do, do this assignment. It still happens to you today. God will ask me to do certain things and I'm thinking, no, I don't have the capacity, I don't have the finances, I don't have anything by which I can get this done. But uh, usually I know I have no choice when God asks me to do something. So I will make my first feeble effort only to discover God takes over. With a fresh resolve, he chose to follow the Lord's footsteps. Sunday's Jerusalem was Ondo State, where he started his life's journey. That was where the crusade also commenced in earnest as Sunday and his team headed for various villages, towns and cities. The vision was to reveal Jesus and establish his rule in every life and in every community that the Lord will take them to. The first crusade was in Ikere Kiti. The results were phenomenal. Salvation, healing, deliverance, breakthroughs and outstanding miracles. Late 80s, I was so impressed by the depth, the richness as well as the contact that the words that is spoke on that day had on me. As a matter of fact, I gave my life to Christ. Like the first crusade, we were new, and uh, our resources were not much. But then, amazingly, God raised help. Uh, team members and of course God again moved a lot of people from the church who were attending rallied around us and even went with us so we had a huge team God met all our needs and we had a fantastic crusade with a lot of miracles and uh, that taught me a lesson very early in ministry that we should totally trust God. Whenever God asks us to go and do something, we don't look at our pocket, we don't even look at our challenges. All we do is obey. The host of the Ikere Kiti Crusade later became the governor of Undo State, Governor Bamidili Ulumilua. God revealed his mighty hands as people and even entire communities and states were gloriously delivered from the shackles and strongholds of the devil. Each crusade involved extensive planning, prayer and networking. The crusade team, crusade director and a host of others went ahead three months before to put things in place, mobilize the local churches secure the cooperation of community leaders, create awareness and sort out logistics, including the venue of the crusade. The intercessors would move into the village or a city a month before the crusade to carry out spiritual mapping and engage in intercession. The crusade team usually comprised of 30 to 40 volunteers. The crusades were known for notable miracles. None of us is an accident. Each one is an incident deliberately created by God for a certain purpose. And life is meaningless unless you find the purpose for which you were created and you give yourself to that purpose. In fact, without purpose, Life is a waste. So if God has called you, if God has called you to ministry, then you have no other choice if you are serious about 
living a fulfilled life. Uh, so, just give yourself totally to it. And uh, working with God is a faith venture. Uh, if you are trying to calculate uh, how you're going to do it, that's not in your ability. Whatever God commands is what God commands. God is a fit God. He just wants to be believed and be obeyed. Then he knows how to set you up. He knows how to put everything together to help you be who he wants you to be and do all he wants you to do.